post the comments on YouTube. All right, Dan. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll. We're live. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, Tuesday morning, it's uh, probably just before 11 o'clock. Um, we're in the shop, uh, obviously Phantom Works, and uh, we're going to do a live. And, and I, I get these questions all the time, and, and one of the most common ones is, um, you know, uh, what is it like to have a, have a TV show? And, and should I get a TV show for my shop? And should I pay people to have a TV show in my shop? And, and uh, so what I wanted to do is go over sort of some of the good and the bad of having a TV show. And folks, there is some of both. So. Um, uh, we're going to do something. If, if you send in a, if you send in a question, um, good questions, Audrey's going to relay to me, and I will try and answer your questions about having a TV show um, uh, as they come in. Um, so let's just start with with a couple of. Uh, I'm going to start with the bad. That way we can end on a positive note. What are the bad parts of having a TV show? Well, the first one is. Um, if you talk to any business owner, they'll tell you that as soon as they open up a business on day one when they're losing money, everybody thinks they're a millionaire. So if you have a TV show, you're no longer a millionaire. You're like a decamillionaire or, or a billionaire. Um, so, so it sort of changes the way people talk to you, the, pe the way people think about you and their expectations of you. Um, and ultimately what ends up happening is you end up with what I call the bullseye on the back. Um, there are companies that will come out and say, well, you know, we need you to sponsor this event and, you know, write us a check for 10 grand. And, you know, it's like 10 grand, that's real money. And yet there are lots and lots of organizations that think you can just start stroking checks because you have a TV show. Um, and the simple reality is, is, well, get a TV show and you'll find out that that probably um, just isn't the case. So um, this whole bullseye thing and, and what that does is that does unfortunately bring bad people out of the woodwork. Um, you got a question. Uh, is what it a good question? Yeah. What happened to Charlie? Was that TV or real? Oh, that was absolutely real and we'll get into that in a few minutes. Uh, well, might as well talk about it now. Um, uh, Charlie was actually a very, very dear friend of mine. We spent Saturdays working together here. Um, we were always working on projects together. And uh, the re we got to talk about noise, too, because the film crew hates noise. No, no, let him. See, they, 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 they want to stop him. All right. All right. So, um, so Charlie was absolutely real. Um, nothing was dramatized in any way, and, and ultimately what, what happened was he had expectations of me that I wasn't financially capable of meeting. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that because Charlie's a good dude, um, but the simple fact is, is uh, Charlie and I have never spoken again uh, since we finished filming that show. The, the relationship ended. Do you miss him? I, absolutely. Uh, it, was, it was a great relationship. Um, Charlie would come over and I would help him do little projects and he'd help me do projects. And we just sort of hung out on Saturdays and did work together. So um, a, a lot of pizza things and changed. Beer club. Huh? He started Pizza and Beer Club. Yeah, yeah, Pizza and Beer Club. Um, so, you know, you, you develop these great relationships with people. It's when the expectations of those relationships um, change and and that's actually the big target thing um, you'd be you'd be actually surprised at people that you wouldn't suspect for the world would suddenly expect things from you and the expectations um, if you don't have the money to cover those expectations you got to let people down and let me tell you when you let people down and you've got a TV show oh they get real pissed off We've got crazy people. Oh, cr all right, crazy people. Um, this is my favorite one of having a TV show. Um, we went out of our way. In fact, the network was not crazy about us telling all the truth about building cars. At least they weren't at first, and then they discovered that people loved it, and then they, they absolutely loved us telling the truth. So we talked about how many hours it took and how many parts it took and, and the realities of building a show. And let's face it, that had never been done. I mean, all the other shows, they just sort of didn't even mention um, that anything cost money, like it was all free. And, and so as a result of me saying on these shows, look, it costs money to do this, and you know, you spent 20,000 on parts, 50 grand on parts. We've had some builds that were, you know, 130, 140,000 on, on parts alone. 
And, and yet, here's the crazy people part of it that I don't understand. I get letters all the time, and these are serious letters, folks. These aren't, you know, like, like you know, this is just a joke to have fun with. Um, last week, I had someone write me uh, wanting a full restoration of two 1960s vehicles, and, and I play this game now with the crew. This was the new low. I asked folks, what do you think the budget is that people are asking me to build a car? And they're like, yeah, what, 25 grand, which is a joke. They wanted two vehicles built for $5,200. So they wanted a, they had a budget of $2,600 to do a full restoration of a 60-year-old car. And I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, who on earth actually can think that way? And, and so th I think these people are crazy. So, so, so the throw out, we're going we're gonna to do that content. Oh, so, so we did... Uh, a, a, a video about uh, a week or so ago on uh, do you want to know the truth or do you want the lie? And, and, and the, the interesting part is, is there's so many people perpetuating the lie that, that quite honestly, I'm, I'm convinced more people like to be lied to. In fact, that's, I tell clients all the time, uh, if you want to be lied to, you know, there's lots of places I can send you. If you want the hard truth and the reality is, I'll, I'll I'll do my best to tell you the hard truth and reality, but people don't like it. So, so crazy people, um, you have to understand, I deal with a lot of crazy people. We get crazy on, person. well, there's a, and let me tell you, it drives me crazy. Um, we get on, on some days, especially if they feature a lot of the shows, I'll get up to 10 submissions in a day and of if, if, you, if you take 100 submissions I get in a row, as a rule, only probably five of them are actually reasonable submissions. Um, there's probably 50 or 60 of them that are, okay, they're not completely crazy, but they're, they're undoable, right? They, they want 50 grand worth of work for 20 grand, or they want 100 grand worth of work for 30 grand. But the really crazy ones... I've got people that are requesting quarter million dollar projects and they want them done for 10 grand. And at that point, I just, I, I, I actually get angry. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I have to resist the urge to tell people that they are in fact just insane. And, and I've, I've sort of, you know, what, what, what? Let them know that we're going to do an episode on what it looks like to pick the perfect build for the Phantom Works crew. Okay, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to soon do one. What does it take to, like, like what is the logic behind a good build, and, and how do you get to a good build? So we're, we're going to do one of these shows on that to give you an idea as, as the owner of a car, as, as someone who want to build your own or want to have somebody else build it, what is logical and, and what makes sense. So we're, we're going to do that for you. But I got to tell you, um, I, I got to tell you about one crazy letter, and I won't mention the man's name, but, but I did get a crazy letter a few weeks ago that just bugged the crap out of me. A guy wrote me and told me about, you know, he's a survivor of this and a survivor of that and, you know, had all these problems. And so therefore, I guess ultimately I needed to build him either a cheap or a free car, and, and I get a lot of those. And, and I normally don't do this, but I wrote him back because I was, I was angry at the way he phrased it, like I owed him this car. And um, I, I, I wrote him a letter, and, and, I, and I wasn't as nasty as I wanted to be, but I basically said, look, dude, um, I served in the military. I've been in combat. Um, I've had plenty of broken bones and injuries and dealt with this and that. And, and I still get up every day and, and work, and, and maybe it's time for you to, too. Um, he did not appreciate my response, but I felt completely vindicated in it. So, folks, I try not to, to return nasty emails, but I got to tell you, I, I get a fair number of them that, uh, that quite honestly, if, if I asked someone to sell me their house for for a thousand dollars and and you know they hand built their house i would expect them to get angry if i was serious about it and, and i do sometimes get get a little angry at, at these um uh these letters all right so, so what are good things about the show what okay so the good things all right um actually a lot of really good things um the the number one that i can tell you is when i go to sema 
I get stopped all the time. Like it's a non-stop people coming up to me saying, okay, you and your show, your the, the series called Phantom Works is what we use to um, to explain to people what it really does take to build a car. So, you know, so the black guys that we took for telling the truth have actually helped out the industry. And, and then when people give me that feedback, that's really awesome. Um, that's, that's one of the best parts of it. I, I got to tell you, I was on, a, on an excursion looking for parts in Europe, and, and it was very cool to step off an airplane. I think I was in Spain. And I step off the airplane, and the guy handling baggage on the ground, I'm walking up to grab my bags, and he's looking at me. He's like, you, you're from Phantom Works. And, you know, he's telling me in this Spanish accent. I'm like, holy crap, you know, you're, you're, you're getting recognized. And it was just a very cool moment to have someone that I wouldn't have expected in the whole world um, to, to say something great. Oh, I love the show, you know. Um, so a, a, a lot of really cool things like that happen. Um, it's kind of cool when you're sitting at lunch and, and someone just sort of looks at you at a restaurant and then they sort of give you a little wave and, and that's their way of, you know, they, they don't want to interrupt your dinner but they want to say hi. That, that was very cool. Um, opportunities. I've met a lot of amazing people as a result of the TV show. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll get people that'll call you up that are celebrities themselves that uh, there, there's, and, and I don't consider anyone at Phantom Works a celebrity, but, but celebrities identify with other people who are, and, and, and we've had a fair number of people just reach out and communicate with us, and, and that's been a very cool part of having a show. So it, it does open some doors for you, but, but I gotta tell you, the best part of all is when you find out you've changed someone's life, and it's the TV show element that did it. Um, and my favorite letter, and let me tell you, we've received so many amazing, wonderful uh, letters, but the one that was the best was uh, a man, and I think he was about my age, and his father was dying and had severe um, Alzheimer's. His father had such um, advanced um, memory issues that he literally didn't know his, the, man's, the man didn't recognize his wife or his kids. And um, so I was, uh, I, I, I get this letter in and he tells me that his father, who was a car builder back in like the 60s, um, the, they, they would sit together and his father on the sofa was, was cognizant of his surroundings but didn't even recognize his son. And then when the show Phantom Works came on, his father was so immersed in building cars that at the, the hour that the show was on, he said, that's the hour I could communicate with my dad because it's like it woke his brain up because apparently we built cars here on the show almost exactly like he built cars um, uh, back in, in the 60s. And so it, it actually changed his father's brain. And during that hour, he and his father could talk and they would mostly talk about cars, but they could... Uh, it, it was that time that they would connect. And so he, he talked about for, for several years prior to his father dying that the most significant thing that happened in his entire life was being able to sit down and watch the show and communicate with his dad. And i got to tell you, I will never forget that letter as long as I live. I, I keep a copy of that letter. And, and when I eventually get ready to, you know, finish up with everything and build a scrapbook, it'll be the first thing in my scrapbook will be the man's letter of how important it was for him to, to, un, you know, to, to have the show Phantom Works. Right, so, we'll yeah. Place. Hey, Dan, how are you able to balance the stress of the show with your home life and your marriage? How did you get Audrey to stick with you through thick and thin? I'd like to know that one. <laughs> um, the balancing of the stress, um, you know, it's, it's a great question, and I, and I don't want to dwell on this because the stress of the show was beyond anything that I could tell you. And, and, and there were reasons for that, that that I won't go into all of them now. In fact, I did an interview with uh, Ashley where we did talk about a lot of those stresses. So if you've got a little bit of time, watch that. Because we, we did have, and, and in fact, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the interview got so dark at times that Ashley came to me and she said, I gotta edit some of this stuff out. And, and, and I gotta tell you, it really, my life was the darkest it's ever been. Um, and, and so, 
How do I balance it? Um, that's that's it just a challenge. I've, I've, and I don't do it well all the time. Some days I go home and I take it with me, and I I I, I, I go home and I'm I'm not a nice guy, and and I and I regret that because my wife is probably the single most amazing human being in the world, and and so. Um, the, the stress factor was, was a big thing. Um, today things are much better, and we'll talk about why things are different today shooting. Um, but today the stresses are actually fairly low. Uh, the stress of owning a business is high. The stress of having a farm is high. Uh, the stress of starting our new company is high. But, but we're actually keeping things in balance, and I think things are just in general going a little bit better. Um, set up time. Yeah, so, so I, I, I want to sort of just show you as a small example of what's going on. So um, do me a favor, turn your camera to the right here. And, and so what we've got here is Brigitte, and I'm going to put her on the spot. Um, Brigitte is a co-producer, and uh, in, in the Phantom Works series, you were field story producer. Mm -hmm. um, and so did I spend more time with you or my wife at the shop during the last series. Um, you spent a lot of time with me. I guarantee it was more with Brigitte. Uh, Brigitte and I would spend, she would come in normally around 6.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, the shop would open at 8, and from 6.30 to 8, we would talk about, you know, who's putting spark plugs in this car, and does that matter for this story? Because we, we never created the story we just yeah. had to figure out what the story the was yeah and, the and we, had, like. we had to extract it yeah. so so oh, wait so. we also spent two or three hours every night oh oh, go oh i was gonna say yeah that was just the morning session yeah uh there were some days we spent most of the days together and then we always so so brigette and i began and ended almost every day together mm -hmm. um and and i guarantee you that during my time at work i i spent more time with brigette even though my wife was 12 feet away, I still spent more time with Brigitte than with my wife. Um, now, what's that? All right, so we've got, we've got Ashley here. Now, Ashley is the, um, the owner of the production company. She owns C-Max. Um, she was, uh, hang on, she started out, and I keep her name in my phone as Ashley Sound Mixing yeah. because Ashley started with the Phantom Works series as uh, doing sound mixing, and then she became uh, ultimately a director. So, so she was the director of the show, um, and so it was a kinship that we developed that we ultimately ended up working together, and that's why we're working together now. Now we're going to turn over here and we're going to say hi to Ace. Hello. Now, Ace, why are you sticking that, that silly thing in my direction? What does it do? It's uh, picking up sound. Well, I, I understand that, but I've got a microphone. I've got a microphone right here, so why do I need a second mic? That's, that's my bad, Dan. Sorry. No, no. See, I, see, I'm proving the point. Is it easy to talk in front of a camera? No. It's not. All right? And, and, when, and I'm deliberately putting you on a spot for that reason, right? Thank you, yeah. And, and, and it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Just a little bit. Yeah, and, and so the reason he's pointing this, this is a directional microphone, because of all the surrounding sounds. Like right now, there's a, there's a pressure washer going on over there, and, and if, if he doesn't correct the sound from just this, I'm picking up all sorts of other things. Asked if I was your daughter again. No. No. All right. We'll get there in one minute. And 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 now, now this young lady is the bane of my existence. Why are you the bane of my existence? Because what do you do? Uh. Hey, can I see your pack? Hey, the sound. I need to check the sound. Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. So so if, if everybody thinks that like the video is the hard part of shooting a, a series, it's the audio. The audio will kill you. And, and so right now what she's doing is she's monitoring outside noises, my pack, Audrey's pack. Um, uh, Davey's got a pack on because I told Davey I was going to come over and speak to him. So she's got to monitor these packs. And I swear we rarely get through 10 minutes at a time without her saying, I need to see your pack. Why did you put it on mute? Why did you take it off? Why is it falling out of your shirt? So um, do, you, do you love this job? Do you love being hazed? Because you get harassed a lot, don't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but do you love it? For the love of film, yeah. Okay, so she actually does a great job, but I got to tell you, it, it's a tough, tough thing to do. Now, Miss Audrey. Audrey is not my daughter. 
No. Um, I met Audrey in a restaurant when a couple of our clients from Phantom Works were trying to hit on her. And, and I was very impressed by the fact that these guys who were some very high-powered millionaires trying to do some very unethical things, she basically put them right in their place, and I, I, I loved it. And so I waited until lunch was over, everybody left, and I walked back and I said, look, I'm actually not trying to hit on you, but I like the way you deal with people and handle clients. Would you be interested in helping to build cars? And I handed her my, my card, and... Uh, 13 years later, this is where we are. Well, 13 years later, here she still is. So, um, not my daughter, but we've been together. I, I have definitely uh, spent probably more time with Audrey than I have my daughter, so there's that. All right, so I would like to now walk you over um, and, and bring the crew over with me. And, and I'm just going to talk about a couple interesting things on shooting a show. Well, first of all, you notice that Davey stand up and talk to me. Yeah. Point the camera straight at Davey. What do you got here? Yeah, it's just a big block. So, well, hang on. I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to grab your camera from you because I want to. I want to make sure. Okay, I, I got it. I'm not going to drop it. Oh, oh, I got to grab that part. Yes. All right. So, Benicia, what's it like having a camera stuck right in your face? Is this. Come on. It's, it's a lot. So, tell me what it's... you had for breakfast. Describe your breakfast this morning. Uh, uh, I didn't really eat for real. I just came here to work. Okay, it's hard even talking about something as simple as breakfast, right? Yeah. All right, so so that's part of the fun. Now, so here's, and, and I'm going to let Manisha have her camera back because I'm probably just going to damage it. But just even shooting Davy. so Benicia, how are you going to follow us under here? So if I'm going to talk to Davy, I need to be under here. But you can see right now that that I'd have to be down here for her to actually see me. And, and so even something as simple as Davey and I, and, and Davey, he's fabricating an exhaust system, but, but you see the challenges to shooting a show because we have to look natural like there's no camera on us, right? We have to just be able to sit here and talk. <laughs> All this but, is hot. But the reality is, is we got a, we got a whole bunch of people watching us. And, and as I explained to people, it's like having it's like having your families watch you on your wedding night. Sometimes it is just uncomfortable. So, huh? Sometimes. So, so part, of, part of this is the fact that we know he's going to do this work well, so we can catch the cool stuff. Right. So, so here, look, the, to build a car, right now Davey is, is actually cutting and welding um, O2 bungs in because he, LS3 he's doing an LS and we have to have our downstream oxygen sensors. And, and so, Davey, let me ask you, and, and just be honest, yeah. is this something really cool that you're doing right now? Yes. Oh, you think it's really yeah. cool? Okay, but, that's uh, As far as what? The show or the No, 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 the just on the car. The car? Oh, I love doing this. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so here, this is interesting. Davey, I, I'll, I'll never forget the day Davey came to me, and, and, and I, I, I love having Davey here, but he's like, Dan, we need an exhaust system, uh, exhaust, you know, bender. And I said, Davey, I don't want an exhaust bender. I, I, it was like you took away a kid's lunch money right at that moment. I went, you really want an exhaust bender? And, and I came to find out that Davey's probably favorite thing, second only to playing with his little kid, is, is probably bending exhaust tubes. So we went out, and I said, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm putting the monkey on his back, made him go find the exhaust machine, and he went out and got it. So, yeah. so now, I'm going to bust your bubble here, though. Do you think everyone in the world is going to want to watch you spend two hours bending and cutting exhaust? No. Okay, so the, the TV world isn't going to think this is really cool, but what is going to be cool moments on this, on this car? Lighting problems. See that? That's the kind of... So there we go. This is real. This happens in the middle of a sequence, and then they're like, stop. And, stop. and Redo so that. spontaneity. Look, when you're into a moment and you're talking about something, and, and Davey's like all worked up and like, Dan, check this out, and he's doing something, and then the light does that or the sound goes bad, it changes everything, and you've got to try and get back into that mood. Yeah. So, so is it easy, in fact, doing this shooting thing no no it's that's not no it's not easy because you know you you get into a groove to where you're you're working what the way you're used to working 
You know, yeah. a lot of us, you know, me, Chris, we've had a lot of experience working in shops without cameras. So you get into a, yeah. you have a rhythm in the way you do things and, uh, and to stop and say, hey, I'm getting ready to do something. You guys need to come over here and catch this. Or we forget. They get mad at us because like they get mad. Yeah. <laughs> they get mad because they miss something cool. Yeah. But it's hard to to well, to do both those things at the same time. Well, and I'm going to give Davy credit here with one thing. Davy is is not quick to anger at all. Like if something happens and Davy gets stopped, Davy is generally pretty even tempered. Um, and, and, and it's, it's interesting how some guys, if you stop them and you say, well, give me five minutes, the film crew says, give me five minutes to fix this mic pack or get this light set up, oh, you'd be amazed. At, I've, I've had guys that'll just get up and walk out right then, and then the film crew's looking at me, and I'm like, oh, crap. Sorry. So um, let's go. I'm going to let you get back to work. Yeah, yeah, let me do and, this. And, and I'm going to let's go over and see Chris, because Chris is a little... Um, no, we're gonna go to we're gonna talk to Will last. Okay, so Chris is next. All right. So Chris is upset at me right now. I love anybody really. All right. Um, are are you are you mic'd up? No. Okay. Um, Hold it for sound. Can you? All right. So I we're gonna. Forgot this guy, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to mic him up, um, and 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 this is this process where like like here's a problem. He's miking on the outside of his jacket, which means or on the outside of his t-shirt, which means he's got to hide his mic pack inside his sweats. And the problem with doing that is sometimes the sweats are a little bit thicker and they mute more of the sound. So they got to adjust his sound volumes up for this. All right, so Chris. Um, the contrast is David gives us a schedule of what he's yeah, going to do. Right, right, right. So. You got me? You got me? Does it sound, all right. That, that, okay, that, that's, that's actually not that common that it happens that quickly. All right, so, so Chris, um, I asked you this morning if yeah. you could fire up the fuelie today. Said, I asked you yesterday. You said, do you think it'll be ready to fire up? <laughs> okay, well, when I, I came over here an hour ago and I said, are we looking good? And what did you say to me? Well, this morning I said you had a 50-50 chance. No, 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 no. When I came over here an hour ago and I said, are we looking good? What did you say? Yeah, we're looking pretty good. No, he didn't. He said, we're just looking. <laughs> were you angry? Were you angry? That's sort of par for the course, though. Okay, oh, wow. he was angry. And he was angry because a screw from, what is that piece of the fuel injection system? Uh, the the uh, enrichment solenoid shutoff micro switch requires a little tiny, it's actually smaller than 440. Yeah, yeah, it's a little so screw. Whatever is smaller than 440 is, is, yeah. is microscopic. Yeah. And when you drop it into the intake down there, you dropped um, it. It's a it's Not a me. thing. Um, finding it can be you know me in a haystack. Right. So so he was irritated. Now when Chris gets irritated, and let me tell you, he's he's like a teddy bear. All right, you just give your teddy bear a hug. And I, I have actually given you a hug on on a number of occasions. So I came over here and and I and I helped him find the screw. We we talked about what noise he heard and everything else and and ultimately that screw was buried on the fuel injection manifold. So the cool part was we we figured it out and it. got got it put back together and his mood came up. But you have to understand that if if he's working on something and the film crew, you know, look, film crews are expensive. These folks they all get paid, and the camera equipment is expensive, and the sound equipment, which this stuff breaks, because in a yeah. shop like this, it, it gets dropped. And oh, I've seen my, one of my favorite stories. Um, one of the camera guys put a camera on the ground and said, I want you to do a burnout over it. I said, I'm going to hit that camera. It's too low. And he goes, no, it's fine. I said, it's too low. And he goes, it's fine. I took off, crushed the crap out of the camera. And he's like, oh, it was too low. And, and so. This equipment gets destroyed, and, and so sometimes the film crew is not ready, and, the, and, the, and, and my crew is ready. And, and we just have somebody make a comment that Chris has been screwing off all morning, and he hasn't been. He's literally been waiting for his turn because we told him. Are, but I don't like 
like you. Yeah, I don't like Chris, you. Chris is doing, but that is part of the scheduling challenge: is that we ask them to hold on doing things because we need them to do something for us. So yeah. So so let me tell you that the you know there's those terms herding cats and all that. The reality is is getting guys who are builders to also. And, and, and there's a term here that I don't love, but I'm going to use it, emote on, on camera. And, and when, when they're happy or excited, actually show that excitement. When they're angry, it's actually okay to show the anger. So let me just ask you. Uh, we're, so we're, we're trying to get this, this thing ready to fire up. Yeah. Where are we with the firing up of this? Well, I got the electric choke and the anti-siphon solenoid um, Hot wired because we have to rewire the car for those. So we have okay. to set a relay and all those things. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump them out for the start, but that stuff still has to be done. Okay, so so hang on, I'm gonna come over here because oh, there's another thing. Just where people are, because if I stand over there, the camera can only get one of us at a time. But if I come here and talk to them, you can zoom out a little bit and get us both. So is this car going to start today? And I'm not trying to upset you by asking that. Uh, it, it will start today, whether it starts on the first shot, because that, that's what this is. Okay. This is, I just put this manifold on there last night. I just finalized the fuel system last night. I just finalized the extra oil that you have to run in the system last night. I feel you got a plug in there. Yeah, I got the, you know, so I, I you know, I've done all those things, but... I have not twisted the key on it one time. I have okay. not run the ignition hot yet. I have not in any of that. So, so, so here's the this thing. Is raw as it gets. If Benicia and this entire crew is ready the instant Chris goes to start the, the car, then, then they'll catch it and it'll be the one that we want. If you're not ready or he is, and, 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 and I love Chris to death, but when, when Bridgette comes to him and says, what are you doing today? He's like, working on a car, you know, and, 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 and she actually needs to know, like, hey, I am dialing in the fuel injection um, manifold, and I am going, you know, I've got the mechanical uh, boost pump all set up, and I'm working on the enrichment valve and the choke, and I'm going to get it all started today, and, and instead of saying that, Chris is like, I'm working on the car, and, and so, you know, Brigitte, she just sort of has to figure out how to follow him, because... While Davey will say, I'm going to be TIG welding exhaust bungs on the X pipe of the LS3 until this time, then I'm going to be doing that. And, and, and Davey makes it easy. Chris, Chris makes Bridget work a little bit harder for the. She's got all her money too. That's why we've got GoPros on him, just right, to right. catch the cool stuff. So, so that's why we do stuff like this. Well, because, because I, I, won't, I won't stop. I, you know, I, have stuff, I have so many cars to work on. Right. I, I, so, I won't stop. That. But so so this is this is the nuances of dealing with doing a car show. You just got to deal with this stuff. All right, now let's go over. Thank thank you, Chris. What? No, and he's not going to start it. That's just it. That just, see, we we would love to start it. We're just not ready to start it. Now, this is Will over here. All right, so a, a client who we're building a car for, and and this happens fairly regularly. They'll come over and they'll say, hey, I've also got this old bike, this other thing, can you work on it? So, Will, g give me a second. Now, Now this is going to be fun because Will is a man of many words. Will, you talk a lot, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That, you've just seen most of what he said in the last two days. Um, Will, is, if, if you're working on something, how comfortable is it? Here, Benicia, I need you to... To get, hang on. We're just gonna, we're gonna get closer to Will. Get up on Will, and let's just see if we can get Will to talk about. So, so, yeah, it's, it's, it is it like yesterday? You you blasted the tanks and right. and you got all the tins ready, right? Yeah. All right. So I, I need you to explain to me what that was like, so that someone watching it on a TV show could understand what that process is. So go ahead and, and explain that to me. Very tedious. Putting the parts inside, taking them off, putting them inside the sandblaster. It takes time to get, you know, to blast all the paint off, to get it right, make sure you don't go and stay in one spot too long. 
What happens if you stay in one spot too long? It gets too high, warps the metal. Okay. So, so that's kind of a cool thing, right? To right. know, like most people have no idea that a sandblaster can actually destroy the body of a vehicle, including a motorcycle, right? Yep. So, so you know, in, in TV they say you need to speak in 10 second sound bites. I don't know if that means anything, but, but you know, is it, is it easy to come up with a 10 second sound bite that says something like, the problem with sandblasting is, if you do it wrong, you don't just you don't just have a uh, you know a, a panel that isn't clean. You destroy the panel, right. right? And and so that's in TV likes talking in ten second sound bites, unfortunately, and and it's tough to do, isn't it? Right. All right. So we were going to talk about a few things, Brigitte. Um, where is Brigitte? I'm right here. Um, we were so so we were talking about cost and schedule and 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 uh, um, people taking stuff home, right? So. Um, <laughs> So let's just talk about some of the costs associated with with building um, with building uh, a, a vehicle on camera. Um, Transportation. Regularly, we have to have. You can go ahead. Just just keep working. I, I, I'll just I'll just chat with them and I'll I'll stop you if I need. That's why we have if, a GoPro if on it. I have to move this vehicle because the camera doesn't like it here. If I've got to move it, whether it's I've, I've had to deliver cars into uh, parks. I've had to deliver cars at restaurants. I've had to deliver cars and, and move them into different locations for filming. Um, those are all some of the costs that you incur doing a TV show. And, and those costs are not reimbursed. Um, if you've got um, a schedule issue, like, like let's just say like one of the things Will's going to be doing here is he and Davey are going to be working together to take off this frame because the client hates this frame. It's a modified frame and it doesn't meet his needs. So we're basically ripping this entire bike apart to put the new frame in. Well, what will happen is the film crew isn't ready and when they, um, noise, uh, when the film crew isn't there to see a critical element like the engine coming out, sometimes the film crew, the, you know, Ashley will come to me and they'll say, you don't understand. This story will be missing uh, like the single most critical element of it if we don't have. That's the Corvette about to start. That's the Corvette, well, maybe about to start. Maybe. So we'll, we'll see, and, and, if, and if it starts, Chris will be a really happy dude. Um, but then the cameras will be mad because so, we didn't film Yeah, but, but the cameras are supposed to be over there actually filming that for the show. Um, so, the, the, the schedules aren't always on, and, and many of occasions, I've had the film crew come to me and say, look, we miss this, and, and my policy was generally, you miss it, you miss it, that's your tough luck, but then they'll come to me and say, you don't understand. The show will be lost if we don't have this. And so, you know, that's when, you know, I, I just sort of shake my head and say, all right, and then I have to pay guys to come in, and, and this is not done on the customer's dime. We take the thing back apart. We put it back together on film. So we're not actually, we're not doing anything that we wouldn't normally do. We just have to do it for the camera. So that happens fairly regularly. But, but the, the toughest cost about having things done, and, and by the way, this is over. The days of doing this were when we were shooting the show um, in its uh, first form was that many of the clients expected free stuff. And, and I won't go into depth on who and how much, but I'll just tell you a lot and a lot. Um, uh, I had clients that expected me to eat $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 in costs because their car was on a TV show. And, and so that's one of the things that if you get a TV show, um, and, and by the way, I, I deal with a number of other um, folks on active TV shows now, and they're facing a lot of the same problems. They call me up saying, Dan, how did you not go broke? And I went, who says I didn't go broke doing it? Um, so, so that um, the, the expenses of shooting something like this can actually be huge. I mean, beyond anything you can possibly imagine. All right. Um, so now I wanted to close out. I wanted to go over and, and talk at Orange Blossom. Um, and we want to talk about the thing that people ask a lot about, which is my mood.
Yes. Is Dan really the person in real life that he is on camera? All right. So come on over here, and we're just going to get to a slightly quieter area. And, and I'm going to tell you, because and, and, people ask me, you know, hey, Dan, are, are, are you really a jerk? Is that for camera? Um, are you angry? Are you happy? Um, and that's, I, I will answer that question basically for the first time ever. Um, so we're just going to start here with this thing. Everybody wants their music. When you go through the shop and you can't have music playing, and it has to do with copyright reasons. Okay, go ahead and... I'm just glad she's a part owner in the company because if I had broke that, that would have been on me. All right. Um, so, so I am forced all the time to tell guys they have to turn their music off. That gets the employees very angry. I mean, you'd be amazed at how angry um, and, and how many fights have ensued over the radio in this shop. Um, customers. Um, customers... Look, we, I, I try to weed out all the craziest ones, but every once in a while, some get through that are still just tough to deal with. And, and dealing with those clients is tough. And, you know, when you've got a client that, that they have unrealistic and unreasonable expectations, I, I'm a chameleon, and, and my, I, I just reflect what comes in after me. Now, the film crew, have we ever had any fights, you and I, or... <laughs> Have we ever had a fight? Did you, did you talk about your headaches first? Not, okay, the he oh, well, I'll, well that, that'll lead to the headaches. What, have we, have we you, fought? You and I fight a lot. Yeah, we, we do. Um, and, and actually, I'll, I will give Bridgette full credit for this. She has never done this. But we've had people on the production crew in the past set my crew up yeah. with very, very... Um, litigious questions, questions like doing things that would basically land me in court in a lawsuit, and, and, and this has been a big problem. Our fights have generally been about schedules. You know, Brigitte will come in and she will say something like, um, you know, hey, uh, the, the network is expecting this car delivered by this date. And, and I mean, I was already on my last nerve. And, and Bridgette says, you know, we need to film the delivery sequence by this date. And I've, I've got an issue with the client and, and I'm putting the project on hold. And the network is expecting the car delivered. And then Bridgette comes in and she's just, are you going to focus on what we, she, she I broke the light. Yeah, she's, I know that. She, it's Okay, so, so the light is broken, so we Wait, now are going to be in... Here, hang on, I'll help you out. Let me buy a new light. <laughs> not that There. <laughs> we, got, we got light now. Not is that, that light. Is that not probably, that all right, light. probably too bright. So, so the, the film crew and I, in fact, I, I will tell you about one fight that actually caused huge problems. I can't even remember what, what was the genesis of the fight, but things got so bad one day, I grabbed everyone in the film crew and I said, get out of the shop. And, and I mean, they're looking at me like, no, we, we live here. And I'm like, I don't care. Move. You are getting out today now. You have five minutes to leave the shop and I'm closing the doors. And I did. And I, oh, do you remember the fallout, fallout from that? I mean, the production company, I'm, I mean, instantly my phone is lighting up. The, the network is calling me. The production company is calling me. And they're like, you can't do that. I'm like, it's my shop. I can do anything I want to. And I kicked everyone out of here. And, and, and I got to tell you that that resulted in many, many heart to heart conversations where they came back later and they said, can you never do that again? And I said, I will try it. But, yeah. but we fired that. For, we, we moved on from that network. We moved on from that production company. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're now in yeah, a so, different production company that Dan actually likes to work with. So, so well, wait, let me let me just address this. And then so. Having someone, I mean, think about it this way. If, if you've ever worked for a boss that you hated, you, you have a tendency to do as little for as you possibly can. If you have someone you work with that you truly love, then, then it's, it, it, 
it's a, it's a much more bearable thing to sort of go out and put in the extra effort. And, and so now, I mean, I'm the one who actually contacted Ashley. So, so I, I drug Ashley, and, and you weren't kicking and screaming, but... Um, yeah, I, I was, coached me through a lot of prep before that call to warm me up for like two yeah. years for that phone call. Yeah, um, so, so the, the, the fact is, though, the, have we had a fight ever since you and I have been working together as CMAX? No. We haven't had a single fight. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean I'm always in the mood to jump in no. front of a camera, <laughs> but, but still, I, I realize that it's sort of like we're doing this for us yeah. now, right? Yeah. That it's no longer for sort of that, that big 800-pound gorilla out there that's, that's pulling the puppet strings. Mm -hmm. We're doing this for us. It's so. because we love the story, we love well, the job, and, and we're not doing it for somebody else's will. Yeah. So let me tell you, we're working, we're building stories and, and building shows just as hard as we ever were, but we're doing it now more because we love doing it rather than the whip is sort of being cracked. But and, and, much, it's, and it's more fun to do it this way. But as much as I stress you out, what about the um, actual Phantom Works crew? People. They, they the crew. They stress you out too, right? The, the, the crew. I, I'm not sure which is worse, you or, or the crew. It, Me. I break more things. Here. We've got the Phantom Works crew and the C Max crew. Um, the people can stress you out. Look, any boss who says that, that the people are not the problem and, and that all the people do everything that they're supposed to every day, um, I, I think they're lying. I, I, I don't think that's true. In fact, I'll, I'll never forget one of my clients, and I, I got to tell you, this is my, one of my favorite stories. I, I said to him, and his name was Jerry, I said, Jerry, I, I, I know you, you have about 18 employees. How do you deal with it? And he looked at me with this, like, deadly look in his face, and he goes, Dan, I want to kill every employee every day. And I went, oh, come on, man, it can't be that bad. And he goes, I'm telling you. I, and I went, whoa. I said, you need to come up with a different line of work. So um, I've, I've never had those reactions. Um, I mean, there have been plenty of days I've wanted to walk out, but, but the employees, for the most part, um, you know, they will always try you. But, but I, I'm going to finish up on, on the, the one thing that was always the biggest um, variable in my life and the thing that caused me the most, the most stress, and that was the delivery. And, and for that, i got to tell you about a, a guy named Chip Foos, um, great guy. For those of you who haven't met Chip Foos, um, you are missing an opportunity. He's one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. He truly is. He's just a genuine, real guy. And um, I, I was hooked on the show overhauling. I was truly hooked on it. And my favorite part of overhauling was the last minute of the show when the owner of the car that had the car stolen from them got their car back. And not only did they get their car back, but they got it back fixed up. And I mean, Chip Foose and the overhauling crew and the production crew and the network spent about a quarter million dollars building each one of those cars. So they were, they were beautiful, nice builds. And, and so I, I watched this delivery and what made the show for me was seeing the guy, cause I gotta tell you, I wanted my car overhauled, you know? And, and, and having one time I, I watched this guy and I'm looking at this vehicle, he's just been delivered by Chip Foose and, um, uh, Chris Jacobs and this amazing crew of the show. And the guy looks at the car and went, yeah, it's nice. And I'm looking at this guy, somebody just handed you a quarter million dollar gift, the most, you know, one of the most coveted gifts in the world, and that's what you have to say? I was angry, because to me, that guy should have been, like, like tears should have been streaming down his face. They practically came down my face when I watched what these guys got. I mean, shivers went up my spine. And so for me, it was that moment, and I've never forgotten that when we deliver a car. So I explained to the clients, I'm like, look, this is your car and, and I want you to be you, but don't be, don't think you're being James Dean and being cool by going, yeah, that's cool. Um, I said, look, if you like the car, I want you to like the car. If you hate the car, tell me you hate the car. I mean, be honest, but whatever that honesty is, I need it to be a big honesty, not, not like this little submissive thing. And, and I gotta tell you, I've had a few clients that, that, you know, you cringe like when one guy, I, I, I took a vehicle, and, and again, I won't tell you what vehicle it was, but it was one of the proudest builds we've ever had here in the show. 
and the car came out magnificently. And, uh, you know, we, we deliver the car to the guy, his family's there, and the first comment out of his face was, do you want me to tell you what you did wrong? And I looked at him and I said, cameras, you keep rolling. And I said, yes. I want you to do nothing more than tell me every single thing that I did wrong in your car on camera so we can show people what people like you are really like. And the comment that he had was, well, you didn't put the right detailed paint in one of the hubcaps. And I said, is that really? Like, like, that's, you're getting this car back that you haven't had for 40 years and the only thing you want to talk about is a paint detail and a hubcap. And, and so that was one of those owners that after that, every delivery I was just cringing, waiting for a guy to tell me that I had the, the wrong, you know, lug nut on this wheel or the wrong, you know, piece of fuzz on that window because they thought it was cool to basically tell me that they were smarter than I was on camera and they knew better about their film or about, about their car delivery. So, so my mood, I, I gotta tell you, I dealt with migraines on average three 24 hour migraines a week. Um, between migraines, having the film crew saying I need more, having the production company saying, Dan, we need you to do this, having the network calling me up, I want this now from you, having my crew, um, the expectations. Um, to say it was tough would be the understatement of the century. It was, it was unbelievably tough. Um, all right. Audrey, you hang on. Audrey's disappeared on me. Where'd she go? Audrey's trying to start a, a Corvette. Audrey, what was the question? All right. Me flying a plane? What about me flying a plane? Yeah, in fact, we're going to go out. Um, I'm going flying in about an hour and a half. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm working on my. Uh, I'm working on another ticket. Um, so I'm going to be out uh, um, uh, zorching, you know, blowing holes in the sky in a few minutes. And we will film it. Um, yeah, so they're going to come out with me. I'm going to throw a couple camera people in the back seat so that I can scare the heck out of them. And, and uh, uh oh. Can, can All right. We, can we address questions? Can we yeah. please address questions? The best question will Yeah, yeah. So here's your... what we're going to do. Oh, wait a second. Go, 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 go. Come on. Go. Okay. Can we see this? Yeah. Is it a bad moment? No, it, it, no. I mean, I had fuel barfing all over the place. That's why it smells like gas. But I think I got that under control. Um, you ready to try again, girl? Yeah. Hang on, because you have to understand, this is this is this isn't a car. This is historic artwork. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Let me have it. Where? Yeah. Let's try it. All right. Look, I'm gonna call that. The fact is you heard that you Don't, oh. don't, don't accelerate. All right, crank it again. It's alive. Okay. Just, just let it run. That fuel injection system hasn't been on this Corvette, because this Corvette is an original fuelie, and um, that fuel injection system hasn't been on this car in 50 years. So you're hearing the sound of something that's just come out of a coma after five decades. So, all right, we're going to end on a great note. Um, that is that sound. I mean, if, if that sound doesn't do something for you, then you're dead. Um, so, uh, folks, uh, doing a show, you're going to have to decide if it's a good idea or not. Um, opened a lot of doors, not a financially beneficial thing in any way, shape, or form. Um, it, it has made a huge difference in my life. Some parts good, some parts bad. Um, the questions, we got in a lot of questions. Audrey's got them all logged. And so what we're gonna do is, I think, uh, is it this week or later this week or next week? We're, Thursday? We are going to announce the best question. We're gonna answer the best question. And we're going to send the best question um, author a, uh, a signed T-shirt from the crew of Phantom Works. And so, uh, folks, stay with us. 
Um, you can see we're building content, but it takes months and months and months to build content. So these lives and the interviews and some of the other things we're doing, we're doing them as we're building content. So folks, this isn't what the new series is. It isn't about me walking around telling you about cars. It's about guys like Chris building cars, but um, it takes time. Uh, nine women cannot make a baby in one month, no matter how hard they try. It still takes one woman nine months to have a baby. And so that's what we're working on is building babies, uh, one woman, nine months at a time. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go, unless you have something else. Did you tell them to like and follow and subscribe? Oh, oh uh, yeah. If you would, really, it does help us a lot, folks. Um, and it helps fund this production crew. So if you can like, follow, subscribe, tell your friends, beat your neighbors up, do whatever you have to, uh, get them to like, follow, and subscribe, we would really appreciate it because it does help us a lot. And with that, folks, thank you so much, and we will see you on Thursday. How long was that? <laughs>